Chelsea, this is a nice surprise. Hey, Mom, Nicole. Good morning, Mom. Excited about lunch today? <laughs> Fabulous Friday indeed. Good morning, Asal. Someone told me yesterday that I, the camera is too close to my face. <laughs> Does it seem like I'm like right up on the camera or is this like a good distance? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad you're here too, Chelsea. Jez, good morning. I mean, this seems like a good distance, right? It looks proportionate, I don't know. I could go farther back, but then it's, my voice won't be picked up as well, right? Hey, Lori. Hey, Salim. <laughs> hey, Lorena. You're looking to the left, Asal. What's over there? Lucia, good morning. You're good. <laughs> Feliz Navi Friday. Do, 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 do. All right, let's talk just for a minute and then we'll do a breathing technique. Some Nadi Shodhana, cleansing of the Nadis. <laughs> And then a short meditation to start our Friday. Yeah, does anyone else feel a little anxiety besides me about everything getting so busy all of a sudden? Man, this quarantine, I gotta say that it was a blessing. I love the slowdown. And this is my challenge to keep things as smooth and calm as possible moving forward, but it, it's a challenge. It, everything's exciting, right? We get, you're busy all of a sudden, it might just be me. So this meditation becomes even more important when the world reopens. So I hope everyone will continue their routine, even if we don't do these daily group meditations. Like I was mentioning yesterday, it's so important to choose a technique that works for you. Oh, Lorena, thank you so much. That means so much to me, thank you. Yeah, like I was mentioning yesterday, it's so important for you to choose a technique that you're actually kind of enthusiastic about, that you have the, the, the scriptures say that you should have reverence for your practice. You should be reverent with your practice. So choose something that you like doing. If you like doing the alternate nostril breathing, do it regularly. If you like doing a heart-focused sadhana where you, view, where you meditate on the lotus, the flaming lotus of the heart, do that. But choose something that works and do it daily. Yeah, daily, daily. It's even more important. I know we started these when the lockdown happened, but when life gets busy and our awareness becomes fragmented so to so many different directions, it's even more important to stay focused. So, All right, I wanted to introduce the idea of pranavayu. Pranavayu. Practice saying that, it'll be on your quiz later. Prana Vayu. Vayu means wind. And there are five Prana Vayus, five of them. So you've heard me mention before that in our body we have energetic channels. They're etheric. Modern science doesn't um, recognize them per se, but they do recognize capillaries and veins and arteries and um, glandular systems and nerve uh, nerves in the body. So the yogis tell us that each one of these bodily systems has a corresponding energetic channel that lives in the etheric realm. So you've seen our chart of koshas, the different layers of being. Well, the physical body is only one seventh of ourselves. The next level up is our pranic sheath, our pranic kosha, also known as the etheric body. So in the etheric body, which is almost physical, it's just slightly less dense. It's the realm where prana lives, right? And some people who have very sensitive eyes can actually see prana. You can see people's glow. You can see their energy. Of course, we can sense it with other faculties, but the eyes can actually sense it. Some people, if they're refined enough, 
It's just different light spectrums. It's, you know, the entire spectrum of wavelengths of energy, our physical eyes only perceive a very small portion. So why wouldn't some people's eyes be more sensitive? That, that's a city, a superpower, right? So it, each of our bodily systems has a, a, has a corresponding energetic channel that flows with it. And if prana doesn't flow, the system doesn't work. Okay, it's like, um, you know, a system of, of hydraulics in a tractor or in a vehicle, you know, you have gas lines and oil lines. And if any one of those lines becomes blocked, one of the systems doesn't function. Same concept. So that's why we practice this Nadi Shodana, cleansing the Nadis through alternate nostril breathing and through breathing intentionally. And it's said that all of these Nadis, all of these energetic channels, generally have prana moving in and out of them in five ways, in five winds, and those are the prana vayus. Hey, Bahara, good to see you. Are you nine hours ahead in Germany? I think you're nine, maybe eight. So the, the five uh, prana vayus can be intentionalized. Now, when I say intentionalized, when you focus on them, you intensify them. And when you intend to optimize a certain wind or a certain movement of prana in the body, you optimize that or work with it or heal it or open it, so to speak. We've talked many times about how where your energy go, where your mind and thoughts go, energy flows. So just quickly, we're going to have a, another multi-day little continual lesson on this, but I want you just to see this thing here, and I'll show this again tomorrow. So this is a chart of the five prana vayus. Udana, prana, samana, apana, and viana. Now, this, this particular chart comes from the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, that really thick book of sutras on physical yoga. And this roughly discusses the location of these winds, of these pranic forces, pranic currents in the body. And we can discuss what their function is. And the yogis of the past have developed techniques, meditation techniques, breathing techniques, and physical asanas, poses that work with each of these prana vayus to optimize the flow of energy in the body and to optimize their effects. So we have some that's focused in the head, in the chest, the abdomen, in the lower pelvic area, and then of course the circulatory, which is all of it. So udana, prana, samana, apana, viana. The five prana vayus. All right, with that being said, let us do a breathing technique and do a meditation. All right, get comfortable. Chelsea, exactly. That uh, kundalini mantra or chant is honoring the method by which prana moves in the body. Exactly. It's honoring and intentionalizing, like I was saying. So energy moves in and out mindfully and freely. Please sit tall. Adjust your shoulders and your spine and your head and your face. Allow the eyes to close. Start to breathe. Constrict the throat slightly for ujjayi breath. So we'll do a few rounds, a moment or so of pure breathing, just to get the energy flowing in the body and get the mind a little bit smoothed out. Relax your face, relax the hips, relax the legs, relax your shoulders, and breathe deeply. Now the spine houses our central nadi. It's called Sushumna nadi. This is the most prominent, the most energized, hopefully, energetic channel in the body. And then there are two more energetic channels that are also important, but slightly less prominent, and those are Ida and Pingala. And those start at each nostril. And those two nadis, as you inhale prana intentionally, those nadis move through the brain and then crisscross down the spine. And where they crisscross, there's a chakra.
surrounding the Sushumna spinal channel. Please bend your right elbow, bring your hand close to your face and close the left nostril with your last two fingers of your left hand. Slowly breathe in through the right nostril. Close the right nostril, breathe out through the left nostril. Breathe in through the left. And out through the right. In through the right. And out through the left. In through the left. And out through the right. Now please continue this cycle on your own. I'll introduce the metronome. Make each breath go for at least five or six seconds. At least five or six clicks, but make the inhale and exhale the same. If you can do eight, Try that, but we're moving from empty to full with each breath. Check back in with your shoulders, make sure they didn't lift up and make sure your eyebrows, your forehead is relaxed. Continue with Nadi Shodana. Put your attention on the pathway of Ida and Pingala Nadi. When you breathe in through your left and the right nostril, the pathway goes up through the nasal cavity, through the brain, crossing once at Ajna Chakra, then down the spine crisscrossing at Vishuddha, Anahata, Manipura, Svadhisthana, Muladhara. If you choose and if it's comfortable, once the breath is very smooth and very refined, introduce slight retentions at the top of each breath. Two seconds, three seconds, four seconds holds after each inhale, intensifying the intelligence of the prana in the body. So this is moving prana in, pranvayu, so bringing information, bringing energy, bringing intelligence and consciousness in the body, receiving, pulling it, magnetizing energy into you. Please continue. Let's do one complete cycle, one more complete cycle.
then rest your hands back to your knees. Be still, let the breath become very subtle. Now see yourself not so much as a body of flesh and bone and fluid, but more so as circling, cycling, radiant energy. Don't be fooled that this body is what you are. You are consciousness, just using this body as a tool, as a vehicle of expression, as a means of experience to be gained in the physical world, but you are not the body. You are energy, you are intelligence. And sense that, rest in energy just for a moment here in our meditation. Let's inhale together. One more, this time hold the breath, breathe in. And hold. And release. Slowly open the eyes. Thank you for joining this morning. All right, tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., we'll talk more about pranavayu and how we can use and move and manipulate energy in our bodies and outside of our bodies for good. Have a beautiful Friday.